of the Nasdaq market site in the heart of Times Square. This is a black tie edition of Fast Money. The crowds are getting ready to cheer in a new year, and investors have reason to cheer, too, as the S&P 500 posting a double-digit gain for 2010. We find ourselves at a crossroads. Companies are starting to hire. Manufacturing is picking up. Banks are starting to lend, but China is slowing down. Interest rates are rising, and housing prices are going nowhere here at the crossroads of the world. A special fast money greed and fear in the new year. We're going to kick it off with BK. Brian Kelly, your outlook for 2011. Well, I'm a fairly bullish. I started there actually midway through the year. I was probably one of the biggest bears on the desk here, and I've certainly flipped around. Uh, as I look out to 2011, it looks like a fairly decent year. Ever since we had the Jackson Hole speech back in August, the market has skyrocketed. So for me, as long as the Federal Reserve can continue its plan, whether you agree with it or not, as long as the they can continue their plan, then stocks should go higher. I'm glad you brought that up because it's our chart of the day. An well, absolute correlation between that speech out in Jackson Hole and the movement in the market from then till now. Right, absolutely. And, and uh, it's part of the chairman's plan is to take the wealth effect, circumvent the banks, and increase the economic feeling of the country. And it's somewhat starting to work. Maybe it's not working, but something's working because the economic numbers are getting much better. Brian, listen, I certainly agree that, and there's no doubt in it, right, that asset prices have risen dramatically as a result of QE. But I think there's two things to consider when it comes to QE in 2011. One is that the Fed composition is changing dramatically and that some much more hawkish regional presidents are going to be on the FOMC. Big this, story in 2011. Yes, and the second thing that I don't think is getting enough attention is how much the Congress is going to be on the Bernanke's back. He is not going to have carte blanche do whatever he wants. He's going to have Ron Paul and the Tea Party all over him at every turn. And I think that will matter. He's a political animal and he will do what is necessary to keep the Fed independent and to keep the political So power. wouldn't that be good for the market then? If every, if every bear out there is saying that Fed's doing the wrong thing, Fed's doing the wrong thing, if it changes, wouldn't all those bears now come in and start buying stocks? Well, no, Brian. I'm saying that the Fed has successfully raised asset prices. I don't think it's done much to the real economy. We're going to talk about this later with Peter Schiff. But it has raised asset prices, which has primarily benefited the wealthy. But I'm saying that that will not continue indefinitely, in my view. The political Take, winds have uh, changed enough. I, I think there's, as you said, they have raised asset prices. They have benefited some of the economy. And there's a perception that things are going fairly well. But I think the reality of the fact that unemployment is still fairly high, people aren't working, so there's still a housing crisis and things like that, which may, as we'll talk about later, get worse, it's still going to be out there. I think we actually struggle for the first part of this year and then pick up toward the end of the year. I'll jump in, though, and say, look, the unemployment rate at, what, 9.8 percent? Yeah, unemployment is high. Consumer discretionary stocks were the leadership group in 2010. But I, 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 I agree, which I think we may, see, we may see turn around. We had a great Christmas. I'm interested to see what happens the first, the first quarter right now. I think a lot of people are either going to have a day of reckoning with credit card bills or they save their money to buy things for Christmas, except and now they may have a tough time going for forward. Except for the fact that the consumer spent more more in cash as opposed to credit cards this Christmas right. than ever before. Household balance sheets are getting better. You can't deny it. Plus, it's a glo global liquidity giveaway. So to the countries that can't even afford to print money or don't print money, like if you're in the euro sector, China's willing to come in and buy your bonds. So when money's free like that, markets go up. I think unemployment's going to be the story, in addition to the Fed, of course, but I think unemployment will be the story this year going forward in 2011, because I think unemployment comes down. It doesn't have to go down dramatically, just enough to keep the momentum going. And look at consumer discretionary this year with a 9.8 unemployment rate. What if it ticks down two-tenths of a percent, just a little bit? You're going to talk about an awful lot of money coming out into the economy. Incomes going up, spending going up. This is painting a fairly decent scenario for 2011, Cortez. Well, and listen, yes, I, I agree, Scott, that the United States actually looks pretty strong. But I think that the main risk actually is overseas. And I think we're seeing that in China, in Europe. Those stock markets have not moved recently. They haven't even come close to keeping pace with the U.S. rally. I think the world is fraught with risk, even as the United States is repairing its balance. Let's get Peter Bookbar in from the prop desk. Peter, where do you see things heading in 2011? Seems like the scenario set up pretty good for this rally that we've seen. Yes, it's been a slow melt up, but nonetheless, one that can continue. Well, let me first quickly say that I feel very underdressed compared to you guys. But I, I, I'll second I that, but go ahead. The, the, main, the main story, I think, in 2011 that's going to determine where equity prices go is going to be the level of interest rates, because this improvement in the economy is not going to happen in a vacuum. It's going to happen coincident with higher inflation and higher interest rates. And yes, we could get a better economy, but that does not mean we get better stock prices. All we have to do is look at the past two years in the U.S., where we had a very a soft U.S. economy, but equity prices still ran almost 90 percent off the uh, March 2009 lows. Look, I'll take into consideration what, what, what Peter says about rising rates. 
The stock market can go up with interest rates going up, can't it? It often and does. Absolutely can. It often and not does. only that, inflation will be good for stocks. That's where you want to be in an inflationary environment. You want to be in things that can go up 10, 20, 30 percent. You, can, you can't have a rising stock market without some inflation you know, in perpetuity. You just need prices to go up. And guess what? Inflation, a little bit of inflation is a very good thing because it allows you to raise prices and keep some of that VIG if you're the company for yourself, for your coffers. Except, and this is where I want to go to right now, soaring commodity prices. We've all seen what's happening with food, energy prices going up. Will it push the U.S. economy over the edge next year? Our next guest says rising inflation and rates will send the U.S. in a downward spiral, and there's little the Fed okay. can do to stop it. We're joined now by Euro-Pacific Capitals, Peter Schiff. Peter, thanks for joining us on this New Year's Eve. Thank you, and Happy New Year, guys. Thank you. Good to see you without the tux, but nonetheless, welcome to the program tonight. <laughs> What's your outlook for 2011? You're painting a fairly big doomsday scenario by these hey. notes. I mean, hey, uh, everything in here except for the world coming to an end. I'm not painting it. I'm just seeing it clearly. You know, Murphy's Law is anything that can go wrong will, and there are so many things that can go wrong. One of them is bound to in 2011, and then when one does, it'll be like dominoes. You know, the big problem is the, the dollar went out, closed out the year very, very weak. I think that continues in 2011. A weakening dollar is going to put more upward pressure on commodity prices that are already rising. It's going to put more upward pressure on interest rates, and it's going to force the Fed to make a very difficult decision. Aggressively start to tighten and let the chips fall where they may, or... Uh, to try to postpone the pain, they keep on printing and they unleash an even greater economic disaster. Peter, 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 exceptionally low for an extended period. Yeah, Where but, you been, man? I mean, that's been the quote from the Fed for the last several yes, months. That's what they're saying. But as, as, as consumer prices really start to move higher, as the dollar starts to tank, as long-term interest rates start to spike, can the Fed really maintain that posture? Hey, Peter, if, if we have these higher rates and we have an economy that at least is chugging along, why would the dollar fall apart? If I look around the world, I want to buy dollars. I no, get a look, higher rate. No, the dollar, look, if you throw out the euro. Yet, we had $600 billion of, of QE come in and the dollar went up. No, it, 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 it went down. What are you looking at the euro? I mean, the euro, Europe has problems, I'm looking too. looking at the U.S. But, dollar went up since no, QE. Again, no, against, look, the, this Australian dollar was up 16% this year. The yen was up 13%. Uh, the Swiss franc was up 12%. Gold was up 27%. Silver was up 75%. How do you see the dollar going up? The dollar because went be, down. Because since, since QE2, the dollar has gone up. You're no. mentioning those things from no, the beginning not. of the year. Yes, it has. Look no. at the Dixie. Look at the dollar index, which, of course, no, no, is first the euro. Look no. at that. The dollar the, has gone up. The no. interest rate differentials no, are changing, hasn't. particularly with you, Europe. If you look no. at the euro two-year rate versus the dollar two-year rates, it's the smallest no. spread we've seen all year. No. Things are the, changing. Let, they don't the dollar, have to let, me get, the let me get Weiss into this CR, discussion. Look, if this was a hockey game, we'll call him the third man in. The CRB, I don't want a fighting penalty. The CRB closed the year at at a two-year high. P uh, Peter, let me, ask, let me ask you this. In terms of, I don't know how you don't see the euro going lower and the dollar at least holding on or moving but higher. But who cares about... The, look, the, who, the pri because, because we're an export economy right now. We're, we're also... We're an export economy. We're running a huge trade deficit. No, what are we're you running a about? huge trade definite deficit with China. We're, in we're term, in terms of the dollar, everybody. though, in terms of the, let, me, let me just finish. In terms of the dollar, though, that's where I'd want to be if I were a global investor. You need China to bail out Spain. You need China to bail out to come to help bail out Europe. The Germans are getting tired of doing it. The French are getting tired of doing it. You know, yeah. UK and they've got their if, own issues. If so you Chinese, want to buy dollars, not euros. No, remember, if China tries to buy, bail out Europe by buying euros and buying European bonds, they're going to sell dollars to do it. They can't prop us both. They have to make a choice. They've got they want to prop surplus. up Europe they can do or, they, they like. or they want to prop up the U.S. I think they're going to choose Europe and let the U.S. tank. I Peter, don't see that. We're their biggest trading partner. No, we're, 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 we're Peter, their, Steve, we're their I want to ask you, and I, you know, I, as I mentioned to you before, I congratulate you on your Wall Street Journal editorial on housing. I agree with you, and I think it's very well thought hey, it's out. And I number think it's one a, on the WallStreetJournal.com. It is a good and don't butter the guy piece. up before well, you. Well, where's the caveat I'm here? I know it's coming. Because I'm going to disagree with him on something. <laughs> I agree with you on most of what you say. But if housing is indeed taking a double dip, I think that interest rates actually will stay low. And I guess my question for you is, given the commodities have already surged as much as they have in 2010, and we did not see, now the bond market, yes, it had a bad fourth quarter, but it had a good year. Interest rates are lower on the year. How do you explain that this year? 
Well, first of all, what you haven't seen is you haven't seen the, the commodity users pass on the higher prices that much to the consumer. That's going to happen in 2011. And so you're not going to get these benign CPI numbers uh, when you start to see this pass through. And also, interest rates just started to rise in the last uh, quarter of the year. I think that's going to continue. And so those higher interest rates are going to hurt the housing market uh, because, you know, as rates go higher, housing becomes less affordable. Kinahan didn't rates get a little ahead of themselves, though, as they backed up? No, well, not at all. I, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say they necessarily got ahead of themselves. But my question is, Peter, if rates go up in a controlled manner, is it really such a bad thing? I who actually said, think it, who rates said go it's going to be controlled? The, well, Fed's not, the Fed is not going to have any control over the long end. So uh, I, I guess then my, my bigger question to you would be, where do you see the 30-year rate at the end of 2011, if you think it's going to be oh, kind of uncontrolled? Well, it, could, it could be a lot higher. I mean, it, you know, I think, it's gonna, I think the rates are going to get towards 4% on the 10-year uh, early in, uh, in 2010. Uh, people might think that's okay. They might think that's the ceiling. But then I think rates are going to spike. I think we can go closer to 5%, and we might even get through that. We even can get to 6%. It's possible before the end of 2011, if not 2012. And then it's off to the races. Remember, yields were at 14%, 15% in, in, in 1981. I think we're going to take out that high uh, before the bear market in bonds is over. Last word. That's it. Thanks, Peter. Good to see you, buddy. Sure thing. Happy New Year. We'll see you certainly in the new year. The inflation discussion is obviously great. Peter, of course, is the author of How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes.